Gentleman from the 17th on passage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is a West African tradition that whenever you address a group of people, you ask an elder for permission to speak. And today I rise with the permission of Mr. Fred Curzan, who is a member, uh, a resident of the 17th Assembly District. So I wonder, Mr. Speaker, if any of us were paying attention to the great speech we heard earlier. Uh, when we talked about the attempted elimination of a group of people, when we talked about the necessity of learning their history, the learning the, the specific history of groups of people. History, if nothing else, Mr. Speaker, is very specific. You have to talk about people, places, things, historicity, uh, accuracy, etc. It's very specific. Um, I also want to say happy Black History Month, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we're still in Black History Month, and Black history is American history. Not only is it American history, it's also world history. And I'd be hard pressed to find anyone who could accurately tell their origin story without mentioning black people. And so when we talk about ethnic studies requirements being taken up by learning about the constitution, learning about the bill of rights, et cetera, I think that we are being short-sighted at best. Now, the Constitution is one of the most beautifully written documents in the history of the world. Hasn't always been lived up to though. Hasn't always applied equally to everyone that it was supposed to. We hold these truths to be self-evident, etc. cetera. Uh, it hasn't always applied equally to everybody. Um, we could even talk about things like the Declaration of Independence, and we could talk about the Articles of Incorporation and the many different things that the Continental Congress did. Uh, however, it's very important that people's specific history be told, that we require ethnic studies because Intentionally, certain groups of people have been left out. We require ethnic studies because intentionally the Bill of Rights have not equally applied to everyone. Me as a black man in America, I know that when I work with young black men, I have to intentionally tell them about the Bill of Rights and tell them that, you know, sometimes if you're in that car and you get pulled over by that officer and your right to be silent can, will be challenged by that officer. And sometimes you make that decision. Do, do I exercise my right to be silent or do I tell them what they need to know so that I can move on and go on with the rest of my day? So we know that these things aren't equally applied. So why are we saying that this Bill of Rights study will tell you about this ethnic group? Or why are we saying that we don't have to study about these ethnic people? We're gonna study about Wisconsin, but not study about native folk. We're gonna study about the Caribbean and not talk about the transatlantic slave trade or the captive trade. We're gonna talk about the history of the United States, but not speak about the 400 years of captivity. We're not gonna speak about the degradation that black and brown folks experience during reconstruction. We're not going to talk about the times during the civil rights movement where people were beaten, hosed, had dogs sicked upon them. This is just another attempt that we spent other times here to push back against the so-called critical race theory. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. We want to make sure that we literally whitewash history in the state of Wisconsin. And I think that we can do better than that. I think that our young people are resilient enough to get all the history told to them the way it was and be resilient and intelligent enough to have great conversations about it, great debates about it. I trust our young people. This is the future of Wisconsin. 
We have to teach them and tell them all the history, not just some and not, we don't want to keep them in basement somewhere shackled and say, look, you're only going to learn what I teach you. There's a whole world out there that you should be prepared for, but I'm only going to teach you what I want you to know. And I won't prepare you for the rest of what's out there. There are black and brown folks that you might meet. I'm not going to, we're going to pretend like they don't exist until you get out into the real world. Mr. Speaker, the vote on this is so red, it's the darkest red you could ever find. Thank you.